Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Ferrando, I'm a professor here at NYU, and um, I am a philosopher of the posthuman. I would like to thank all of you for being here today to discuss this wonderful topic. I would like to thank uh, Andres and Lucy for organizing this event, and I would like also to say hi to Barcelona. I was studying there as an Erasmus student and I truly loved it. So hi everyone. I'm really excited today to discuss together the topic of the enlightenment of technology. So let's address this question more thoroughly. Can technology be enlightened? More specifically, can we become enlightened through the use of technology and in our interactions with technology. Before we can address these questions, we need to ask another crucial question, a question which was at the base of all ancient philosophies. What is that we need to live a happy life? In order to live a happy life, we need to know that everything is possible. For instance, thinking through Nietzsche and the Ubermensch, we can become our own work of art. But it is also important to remember that everything is possible in the material and semiotic network of transcendence that is existence. Everything is possible in a material sense through the relations that I create in my life every day, through my intentions, my thoughts, my material networking in this lifetime. It is not just about my ideas or about who I want to be. It is not just about the abstract dream constructed in my mind. But it is about how I am actually living this life and what this is creating. So how can the quantumness of archipelagos help us with this. Mm? This is the topic of this wonderful event, the quantumness of archipelagos. The quantumness of archipelagos helps us understanding the unlimited possibilities we are part of. In this sense, we are beyond humanity beyond technology, beyond. We are as an open network, as a bridge, we are. In order to understand more clearly this concept of being, I want to play a little game and I want you to imagine. Now, imagine. Imagine that you are much more than what you think you are. Now think of your body extensively, expanding through all the connections and interactions that make you, you. All your organs, the bacteria that inhabit your body, the gut flora that keeps you healthy, the clothes you are wearing, the food you eat every day, the water you are, 
the water you intake and expel through your body, the thoughts you have, the emails you write, the websites you visit, the energy you give and receive. You are and you are also part of a species, part of a planet. You are living in a changing world. And these changes include our daily interactions with technology. You are living in a continent where some people spend more time in front of a screen than doing anything else. This enchantment with technology comes from its power to materialize an all human dream that everything is possible. This is one of the most ancient human dreams. The idea that yes, everything is possible. But once technology becomes an addiction, that power is lost. In a society where babies learn to say iPod before they say mom, we need to rethink where we are and where we want to be. So let's go back to our question. Can technology be enlightened? And again, let's not think of technology as something abstract but it's something very material, embodied, and dimensionally specific. Yes, everything is possible, but nothing is neutral. Everything we do is driving us to a specific direction. As a species, we can become empowered by the unlimited possibilities that technology is opening. But we need to do it mindfully and with full awareness. Otherwise, the power of the technological paradigm shift is going to push our human techno addicts to complete oblivion of the reason to live, eventually bringing anxiety and emptiness. So what is the reason to live? Why do we live? The reason to live, the sense of living, is that by living, by existing, by being, we are shifting the directions of our species, of our planet, of this dimension. The reason to live is that by living, we are actually, we are actualizing the potentiality of existence. By choosing one modus vivendi, which means a way of living in Latin, instead of another, we are actually creating the ontos, the material, actualization of existence. 
this irresistible agency can cause confusion and illusion. So we need to meditate on our location in this world in which we are living. What do we stand for? What is our vision? What is it that we want? And I'm asking you again, what is it that you want? Ways of revealing. I'm talking to you through my digital avatar. Right now, I am in New York City, five hours earlier than you in Barcelona. Here is five in the morning and I'm sleeping. Even though my physical body and mind are resting, my avatar is giving you a message. This message, which is related to the prophecy of technology, is that technology can be enlightened and can bring enlightenment. In the quantum archipelagos of possibilities, yes, this is possible. Technology can be enlightened. But technology is not a singular term. It is a plural archipelago of different technologies and of different ways to interact with technology. Furthermore, technology as a notion stands on relations. Let's bring an example. Currently, digital technologies and humans are intrinsically correlated, as many of the inputs to the development of technology come from some specific human bodies, human minds, visions and needs of the people who code. Right now, for instance, the tentative of making technology more addictive by some of the companies that are managing platforms used by a large majority of users, including children, is based on the will to gain more time of the users in front of the screen. Facebook, for instance, is based on advertisements which are embedded in content accessed by the users when they are online. This is why it is between little commas free for users, since you are paying by spending time on it and by sharing data. This data that you freely provide is used to sell access to you. For instance, by targeting specific ads in your news feed. To summarize, these companies are actually making money when you are using their platforms. So they want you to spend more and more time online. This is what coders call brain hacking or addiction coding. Brain hacking, addiction coding. And this is something we need to reflect upon. Is addiction something we want in our social and individual relations to technology? My answer is no. 
addiction and enlightenment do not go hand in hand. To become enlightened, there cannot be any attachment left. Following the addiction to technology would be impeding the process of enlightenment. But of course, brain hacking is just one example of intention in relation to technology. There are many other examples we can bring. For instance, think of that email you sent some days ago. That email, full of wisdom and kindness, made you and the person who read it feeling good and inspired. Behind that email, there was also an intention which brought specific reactions. Now, I like to think of technology through the suggestion given by Martin Heidegger in his famous essay, The Question Concerning Technology in which he defines technology as a way of revealing. A way of revealing. A way of revealing. In other words, technology is neither good or bad. It is full potentiality and actuality. In this sense, technology is not innocent. Since out of the unlimited possibilities that can be actualized, only some materially manifest in the sensitive texture of space-time. Following our previous example, we can state that an email is not just an email. Out of the unlimited potential of technological revealing, what we are bringing forth is relevant to the whole ontological intra-acting of existence. I would like to end this conversation by bringing you into the conversation and enact a short meditation to understand where we stand in our technological relations, reflecting on the intentions, aspirations, actions, reactions, consequences, and materials that are entangled with us, and realizing how these entanglements change us as much as we change them. Full relationality, co-changing both terms of the relations, a liquid movement of hybridization. This is our conclusive meditation. I would like to ask you to sit comfortable as you already are in this beautiful room in Barcelona. I would also like to ask you to close your eyes if you are comfortable with that. Now think of the technology you use daily or habitually. It can be your phone, 
your laptop or any other technological device. Choose the one that you use more often, if that is possible. And now, focus on that. Think of the body of such technology. Think of its shape, of its color, of its material. Where did the materials that now constitute your technological companion came from? Who made it? When is the first time you use it each day? Is it in the morning? In the afternoon? And for how long do you use it for? For what purposes do you use this kind of technology? What kind of searches do you do? What kind of videos do you play on it? What kind of conversations do you have on it? What kind of, ener of energy do you experience when working with it? For instance, are you anxious? Are you inspired? Are you in a hurry? Are you relaxed? Are you mindful when you use this kind of technology? Now take a minute and let all the details that you have recollected freely come to your mind. Contemplate your interactions and please do not judge yourself nor this piece of technology. We are always in relations. We are the technology we use. The technology we use becomes us. These are intra-actions, to quote Karen Barad. Intra-actions that are constantly changing the sensitive material framework of space-time. Next time you are on your computer or on your phone, just be aware of the unlimited consequences, possibilities, actions and reactions of the waves that you are creating in this single use, in this specific moment. Yes, technology can be enlightened. Technology can bring enlightenment. But first, we need to locate ourselves in this relation. It is a co-relation. It is who we are. My name is Francesca Ferrando. My website is theposthuman.org and I'm looking forward to connect to all of you for further developing this highly inspiring conversation on the enlightenment of technology. So thanks so much, all of you. I really looking forward to meeting you and uh, yes, let's bring enlightenment through technology, within technology and in our species. Thank you so much for your kind attention.